We are 30 minutes into the U.S. trading day on this Monday, March 25th. Here are the top stories we're following. Boeing's big shakeup. The plane maker today announcing that Dave Calhoun will step down as CEO as the company grapples with crisis. However, Calhoun will stay on through the end of 2024 and have a say on who his successor is. We'll discuss. Chips under pressure after the FT reports that China has adopted new guidelines designed to limit the use of U.S.-made microprocessors and servers. Intel and AMD shares fall. And spring break in full swing. We'll check in with Priceline CEO Brett Keller about the state of revenge travel and how the outlook compares to last year. I'm Katie Greifeld in New York. Welcome to Bloomberg Markets. You take a look at markets on this Monday morning, and it's a sea of red behind me. We're not talking about huge uh, downdrafts here, but you take a look at the S&P 500, currently off by about two-tenths of a percent, even more so if you go down the list. You take a look at the NASDAQ 100, those big tech names, that benchmark under pressure as well, currently off by about half a percent. And a lot of that ties back to what we're seeing in the chip space, of course, with Intel and AMD, which we'll discuss, but the Philadelphia semiconductor index currently off by about six tenths of a percent. But we want to get back to Boeing, of course, one of the big stories today, and that is after announcing sweeping management changes with CEO Dave Calhoun set to leave the company at the end of the year. The airplane maker, of course, is grappling with a safety crisis centered on its most important product, the 737 MAX jetliner. Joining us now to help break it down is Bloomberg's Guy Johnson. And Guy, where does this leave Boeing without Calhoun at the helm? It's a joy to talk with you, of course. We don't know who the CEO will be, but what we know right now is that Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun is stepping down at the end of this year. Of course, our thanks to Bloomberg's Guy Johnson. And joining us now for a broader look at these markets, we're joined now by Alfonso Peck Atiello, the Macro Compass CEO. And Alfonso, I won't talk to you about Boeing, but I do want to go to this line in your notes uh, since it did give me a chuckle. You write that if you take a look at markets right now, they're priced as if the next three to six months will be one of the most boring macro periods ever. So that's what the pricing is telling you. Do you think that that actually will be the reality, though? No, not really. So that can be fun for investors, Katie, because... For a couple minutes, we're just getting started here, but we want to take a quick look at what's moving underneath the surface of these markets. We're going to do that now with Bloomberg's Bailey Lipschultz sitting to my left. And tell me what's going on with big tech. Yeah, Katie, a little bit of selling pressure in the likes of Apple, Google, and... Meme stocks. Let's take a look at Reddit. Uh, sure is actually surging right now. When do we call this a meme stock? It's still... Now coming up, chip stocks getting socked after reports of a Chinese crackdown. Details next. Well, chip stocks, they're getting hit this morning following reports of a Chinese crackdown on U.S. chips. China reportedly adopting new guidance to limit the use of U.S.-made microprocessors and servers in government computers. This is according to reporting from the Financial Times. Bloomberg's Alex Webb joins us now with the details. And it feels like this has been one of the main arenas where uh, the Chinese-U.S. tensions have been playing out. And putting it in that context, I mean, how big of a step is this? I mean, Intel shares currently off by about 2.5%. AMD trying to flip positive right now. We're going to continue to keep an eye on this story. Bloomberg's Alex Webb, thank you so much. And we're back now with Alfonso Pecatiello, the Macro Compass CEO. And let's talk about leadership in this market. When it comes to the equity market in particular, it's big tech, it's these chip names. A lot of people have compared this to the late 90s, early 1000s, and called this a bubble. Where do you fall on that argument? this conversation. Thank you for your time on this Monday. Our thanks to Alfonso Pecatiello, the CEO of Macro Compass. Now still ahead, we're going to take a look at the companies making the time now for social climbers. Look at the stocks making waves on social media this morning. And first up, Chick-fil-A. It's going to be more like chick full of antibiotics. The fast food chain says it will start using antibiotics in its chickens because of supply challenges. Now, remember, Chick-fil-A, it served antibiotic-free chicken at all of its restaurants since 2019. But when it comes to this change, there's no specific deadline on when it will roll out. Next up, we have Walt Disney upgraded at Barclays to overweight. You have the analyst saying that the company is seeing a, quote, narrative reset, which should result in positive earnings estimate revisions. And finally, we do have Novo Nordisk announcing it's buying a small German biotech company for a little over $1 billion. Now, this deal is intended to strengthen Novo Nordisk's cardiovascular pipeline and help the drug maker expand outside of its core diabetes and weight loss markets. And we did want to keep an eye on, of course, what we're seeing going on with Vimeo, a big plunge there, as well as Lucid, of course. Uh, you take a look. 
Well, Boeing is stealing headlines this morning after it announced that President and CEO David Calhoun, he will be leaving the company at the end of the year. And for more on the stock reaction, we're joined now by Bloomberg's Abigail Doolittle. Well, we're looking at the type of stock at real. Thank you so much. And for more on the state of travel, I'm pleased to say we're joined now by Priceline CEO Brett Keller. And Brett, let's start there because, of course, through March 25th, we are in the heart of spring break. What has general demand for travel looked like this season? Well, demand has remained uh, a little bit because I'm sure you saw Miami Beach's break up with spring break campaign, of course. Uh, they're really imposing harsher curfews, uh, more drunk driving checkpoints, et cetera. Did that have any noticeable impact on travel to Miami over the past few weeks? You know, when we look at travel trends. Coming out of the pandemic, a lot of people have said that that is basically revenge travel, that people have been pent up for several years and they've been wanting to get out and see the world. To your point, I mean, demand to Asia uh, is quite healthy at this point. But do you see that revenge travel impulse fading anytime soon? Well, I think that was absolutely a term. Of inflation, the growth of inflation has slowed. Of course, prices are still quite high. But I mean, looking abroad and the demand to travel overseas, you do have high prices. You also have ongoing hot wars in the world right now. And then you also have factors such as the Olympics coming up in Paris. What is the outlook for summer travel as it compares to maybe last year or the year before? Well, I think the outlook is still relatively travel demand that uh, is picking up relative to Europe. But we opened, of course, this segment talking about Boeing. Boeing is the news of the day, and it's been the news of 2024, really kicking off with the Alaska Airlines incident in early January. Are you seeing any impact on booking or maybe behavior pattern changes when it comes to flyers trying to avoid Boeing planes? Uh, very little on that topic. In fact, as you saw with the team. Of course, uh, checking what type of plane they're actually flying on. But I want to uh, ask you about some other news that we're learning about uh, just today. And that's a, that is that the FAA, it's considering curbing new routes at United Airlines and also from flying its paying customers on newly delivered aircraft. Now, this is according to reporting. It's preliminary. But if that goes through, what impact could that have on domestic travel? Well, I suppose it depends on the number of flights that that's impacted. Let you go. I do want to talk about AI. It's hard to have a conversation these days without talking about AI. I know that you've incorporated AI tools into your app. Have you seen any change in how people book through the chatbot versus traditional search? Sure. We haven't seen a. We've really enjoyed this conversation. Hope to speak to you again soon. That, of course, is Brett Keller of Priceline. Really interesting conversation ahead of what's expected to be a very busy summer of travel. But before we get there, let's get a check on these markets. We're going to do that with Bloomberg's Abigail Doolittle. We're looking at a modestly very ugly day for United. Bloomberg's Abigail Doolittle, thank you so much. Now coming up, the fight at the House of Mouse. We'll have the latest on. All right, it's time now for our Wall Street Week daily segment. And today, we're taking a deep dive into the proxy battle brewing at Disney. That's pitting activist investor Nelson Peltz against Disney CEO Bob Iger. And I'm pleased to say that we're joined now by Charles Elson. He is founding director of the Weinberg Center for Corporate Governance at the University of Delaware, as well as Wall Street Week host David Weston. And David Weston, that annual meeting at Disney is yeah. fast approaching. Yeah, and this one hits close to home because I worked there for quite a while. As you know, I worked with Bob. There. Hope to speak with you again soon. That was Charles Elson of the University of Delaware. And David, it is going to be so interesting, yeah. of course, to see how this proxy battle goes. That ISS recommendation for Peltz's side it's pretty yeah. meaningful. Give him a like. big leg up, but it's going to be a real showdown come next Wednesday at that general shareholders meeting. Of course, to David Weston. This is Bloomberg. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the stocks hitting highs this morning. And we have Disney hitting a 52 week high. We're to strike CEO. He joins Bloomberg Technology with Ed Ludlow coming up next. This is Bloomberg.